Ion Tuner. In this video, I'll show you how to convert this into a plug-in tuner for use with an electronic musical instrument. Here's a demonstration of the tuner. It's a little bit slow responding at low frequencies. This is not unusual of any electronic tuner. I tested the range and found the tuner to work from 24.5 Hz to 7 kHz. I've converted some of these tuners in the past using this USB flex hose, but I think I found a better way, and that's using this lock line tubing. The lock line tubing is typically used for industrial applications, but it's really useful in DIY projects. To remove a link is very easy. Just insert a large Phillips screwdriver and, and break it off. Putting the links back on is a little more difficult, so there's a tool, a uh, crimping pliers, that makes the assembly really easy. So for the tuner conversion, we're first gonna pull off the clamp, remove the battery, and there's a single Phillips screw that holds the two half shells of the case together. Remove that screw and then pry apart the case. I'm just using my fingernails here to separate it. You could also use a small screwdriver. So we'll first work on the back half shell, pulled out the conductive button. Uh, optionally, you can remove the piezo disc. You don't need to. And we're now gonna glue a link of lock line onto the back of the back half shell. I'm gonna use this clear Gorilla Glue to attach the link to the back half shell. So I'm first going to want to scuff up the plastic parts. Now I'm going to clean the parts with a damp paper towel. The Gorilla Glue likes a damp surface for bonding. So I'm not going to let them dry. I'm just going to go ahead and apply the glue. One downside of this glue is it takes a full 24 hours to fully cure. So we'll clamp this and set it aside. Many hours later. Okay, after the glue is dried, we're gonna clean up any residual glue and pop out the little rubber plug that's in the back half shell of the tuner. On the tuner PCB, there is a spring and a contact bar for picking up the signal off the piezo disc. We are gonna remove those and apply some fresh solder to tin those connections. I'm using a flexible silicon wire to make the connections. The red wire is going to connect where the contact bar was. And the black wire is going to connect where the spring was. Now, since we're going to use this with a analog synthesizer that puts out relatively high voltages, it's a good idea to add some resistance on the signal line. This resistance will mimic the output impedance of the piezo disc. I'm using 820K ohms here, but anything from 500K to one meg should work just fine. We're now ready to reassemble the tuner. So I'm putting the conductive rubber button in the back half shell and feed the wires down through the passage hole. 
line up the two shells and snap the tuner back together and insert the small Phillips screw. I'm feeding the wires down through the lock line and I'm going to assemble it without the, the tool, but normally I would use the tool. All right, so here I've drilled out the bottom lock line piece to accept the outer cover of a 3.5 millimeter uh, plug. So now to finish up, we can solder the 3.5 millimeter plug to the wires with the red wire going to the tip and the black wire going to the sleeve. All right, that's the conversion. Thanks for watching.